Hi, this is chapter 3 of the first SARS tutorial. Let's continue with the various tabs available to you in heritage, heritage cases. After we filled in the first three compulsory options, the case header is the first area that you have to fill in. The case reference is a friendly name uh, for the case, so the official references which the heritage authorities use come later and are added by the case officers, so you don't need to worry about that. Let's continue with the uh, test as a wind farm, and let's put it in the uh, Kimberley area. So we could perhaps go with something like this. Wind farm, Kimberley. And the proposal description is uh, a longer description setting out the properties and the municipalities on which the application usually falls. So we could go for something like this. Um, proposed 128. Uh, I think it's. Uh, Sol Pikey and Northern Cape. Okay, right. The applicant field. Now, this is either the owner <coughs> of the property or the uh, representative of the development firm, um, and at times it can be the consultant acting on behalf of the applicant. I've already created a John demo account and all you do is simply start entering the text and it will auto find uh, matches for the names that you're entering. If the name isn't in the database, um, it's a new user or a new organization, you may use companies but not preferred, um, then go to create people and a pop-up box appears and you can fill in the fields for a new person into the database and then this is automatically inserted once you hit save into the field for the applicant. You'll notice a node ID. Uh, if the name entered isn't a match in the system, it won't link up to a node ID. So if we perhaps put Walter, uh, Walter White, it's not a match in our system, and if I tab away the node ID doesn't appear. This is uh, an indication that the applicant um, has not been filled in correctly and it will not pull the automatic addresses linked to that person's record in the database. Um, if this is the case, please delete the, the name, either insert it by creating a new person record or you can go to search and there are various options here um, by which you can find a, a person or their company. Uh, for instance, we can change this to contains and let's search for everyone with the surname of Smith. And there we go, there are three matches. Okay, let's pick Joe Smith, for instance. Just simply clicking on it will insert the person's name into the field. All right, let's choose John Demo again. So John Demo, make sure you select the auto find and then the consultant, I am going to make th this applicant demo user the consultant. Okay, all right, there you'll notice the little help buttons uh, or pop-up boxes um, are placed in certain places and they are often um, descriptive instructions below certain fields where the additional information about what you need to do um, are appropriate. Okay, heritage reports. Um, these are detailed um, bibliographic records with PDFs of the heritage reports. This is usually uploaded to the, the case at a, a later stage, not usually at the beginning of the application. Um, at times this does happen at the same time, but uh, we'll do that a bit later. Um, we'll skip this step for now. Also note that you can add multiple applicants and multiple consultants. So there might be four or five or more consultants um, creating heritage reports on a 
particular case. Uh, those heritage reports can be uh, archaeological impact assessments, heritage impact assessments, paleontological impact assessments, they could even be object condition assessments, anything that uh, has a heritage type report attached to it. Um, the, this you can also use for the uh, environmental consultants, but the bibliographic information we is not expected for EIAs. Um, those are attached later um, under the attached docs. So for heritage reports, these are only heritage reports that are submitted to uh, SARA in terms of the national inventory uh, requirements or your relevant heritage authority. Just worth noting, on creation and when you edit your case, you can set a revision log message. You would not normally do this when you just create the case, but if you go back to edit something, please fill in a revision log message um, just explaining what you changed. Um, the system does keep track of the, the changes, but it just makes it easier for a case officer to know uh, why you've gone in and changed something. Um, besides maybe the, the first session where you were you know, going in and out of a case um, submitting information. But if you've gone back to the case after a week perhaps and you edit something, um, please keep a log and uh, state what uh, changes were made. Um, all the revisions can be reverted um, if this is abused, but we've, we've kept it um, enabled at this stage that uh, applicants are able to edit the case while it's still being uh, deliberated. Okay. The next tab, and to pop right back to the, the area of the tabs, you can click on back to top, uh, is other reps. Other reps is for the other departments uh, who may or may not be the decision makers in this case. In this uh, instance, we would normally have the Department of Environmental Affairs as the decision maker, and we can specify their number reference, and we can specify a case type that they are dealing with. Uh, I'm going to make this one the EIA and we can specify a deadline date for comment. So this might be due for comment um, October or November the 17th, something like that. Or no, it would be perhaps 60 days, so let's go for 17th. Okay, uh, and you can have multiple uh, organizations. Um, so this might be you know, Department of Environmental Affairs and uh, Minerals um, dealing with perhaps there's different aspects of a case uh, and those two references are then printed on every single decision uh, in addition to the official references passed by the Heritage Authority.